Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out ButterFS. And what is ButterFS, you might ask? Well, ButterFS is a file system, but not just any file system. It's a file system with a lot of features, modern features, that you won't find on many other file systems. And the features that ButterFS adds, like snapshots, scrubbing, and things like that, those features add quite a bit of value to ButterFS, so much so, in fact, that some distributions, like SUSE and Fedora, they actually default to the ButterFS file system, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to do in today's video is actually set up our very own ButterFS implementation so that way you can see it in action. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get started. So let's dive in. All right, so in this section, what I'm going to do is show you guys the process of creating your own implementation of ButterFS. In this case, I created an instance of Fedora 35, and I created this before Fedora 36 was actually released, but it shouldn't really matter that this Linode instance right here is one version behind because, well, for our purposes today, it's just not going to make a difference. Now, one thing to note about VPS or cloud instances of Fedora is that often, they will not be using ButterFS. So if we take a look at the FS tab file, we can see that we're actually using extended four right here. So we are not using ButterFS, at least not on this particular instance. But you know what? That's okay because we can still set up ButterFS. We can still implement ButterFS. It doesn't really make a difference that the root file system is or is not consisting of ButterFS. We can go ahead and just add another volume. So what I'm going to do is switch over here to the Linode dashboard. And here I have my test instance. So I'll click on that. And I'll go to the storage tab right here. And what I'll do is create a new volume. So I just call mine Fedora ButterFS. I'll go ahead and create the volume. And we get all the commands right here that we can use to set up the volume, but I'm going to ignore this for now because I want to do something fun. I mean, yeah, these commands would absolutely get this volume mounted and set up and ready to go. But what I want to do again is set up a ButterFS implementation. So I'm going to handle this manually. So here on the Fedora instance that I'm already connected to, let's type lsblk. And as you can see, we have SDC at the very end. So that's our new storage device. So we have a disk, and now what we're going to do is create our ButterFS implementation. But in order to do that, we will need the user space utilities installed first, because without those, even though ButterFS itself is built into the Linux kernel, we can't actually work with it unless we have the user space utilities installed. So what we'll do is just type which ButterFS. And in my case, I show output here for that command. So ButterFS, the utilities at least, are installed and are available. So we should be good to continue. So anyway, we have slash dev slash SDC, our new volume right here. So to get ButterFS going and actually use that device with ButterFS, what I'll do is I'll type MKFS and then ButterFS. So makefs.butterfs. And then the actual device is going to be slash dev slash SDC, just like that. So I'll press enter and let's see what happens. And there we go. We should actually have our very own volume right here of ButterFS. And all we had to do was run that one command right there, which isn't all that different from other commands, you know, like other commands that format devices, for example, if we wanted to do extended four, then the command would have looked like that. But we wanted ButterFS, so what we did is we actually ran makefs.butterfs. We gave it a device, and now we should be good to go. Now, just like with any other file system, we will need to actually create a directory where we will be mounting that device to. So we'll run make dir. And randomly, I'll just say slash MNT. That's always a good place to put these kinds of things anyway. And underneath that, I'll just call it ButterFS hyphen data. So now that directory does indeed exist. And what we should be able to do is mount that device. Let's see what happens. 
So I'll type mount slash dev slash SDC, and I'll mount it to the directory that we've just created. And as you can see, it's right there at the end. It tells me that we have 20 gigabytes available, and it's mounted at slash mnt slash butterfs hyphen data. Now, as an aside, even though I use the df-h command, that's not really something that you want to make a habit of when it comes to ButterFS because that can be unreliable. The DF command is not always going to take everything into consideration that ButterFS might be using, you know, like snapshots and everything that's related to that. I only use DF-H here out of habit just to see that it was mounted. And as you can see, it is. I could have simply just ran the mount command like this, and we see the ButterFS device there at the end. Either way, we know it's mounted, so, so far so good. Next, what I'm going to do is walk through the process of creating a subvolume. Now, earlier we did this already, but that was a snapshot. What I want to do right now is just create a standard subvolume. And to do that, what I'll run is, of course, ButterFS, and then subvolume. We want to create a subvolume, and we'll type the path to the device that we've just created and mounted. ButterFS data. But what we want to do is give the subvolume its own name. So what I'll do, I'll just call it my vol hyphen one. I think that's good enough. So I'll press enter. And it says create subvolume. There's no errors here. I know for sure there's no errors because I've just checked the exit code. So if I didn't know any better, I would be under the assumption that it did in fact create that subvolume. So if we check a list of subvolumes here, we can see that we have my vol one listed as a subvolume. So we were actually able to create a subvolume right here with our test implementation of ButterFS. Now, before we go any further, I just want to underscore the fact that you really shouldn't make it a habit to use df-h to understand fully how much space you have left when it comes to your ButterFS device. In this case, I would argue that it probably is accurate, but then again, I haven't even saved anything on that device yet, so it really doesn't matter. Again, the df command, as well as du and possibly others, are going to be a bit inaccurate when it comes to figuring out the storage or available storage space of your ButterFS implementation. So what I would do instead is make sure that you're using the ButterFS user space utilities to determine the amount of free space that you might have. So for example, we could run ButterFS. And as an aside, I was using sudo at the beginning of the video, but now I'm logged in as root. I don't need to do that anymore. So I just start with butterfs at this point. We'll type file system, df, and then we type the path that points to the subvolume. In our case, slash mnt slash butterfs data. And here we actually see how the storage breaks down. So I recommend that you use the user space utilities when it comes to figuring out how much space you might have available. In this case, we're not even using a single megabyte, so we're definitely in good shape. So at this point, let's play around with snapshots again. Snapshots are awesome, and I would definitely welcome another opportunity to play around with that, so let's do it. What I'm going to do is just create a simple text file, and I'll create the file underneath the subvolume that we've just created. I'll name it example underscore file dot txt. Some random text, I think that's good enough. Let's save the file. And there we have the text file. Now what I'm going to do is create that snapshot. So again, butterfs, subvolume, and then snapshot. So we have myvol1, that's our subvolume. And what I want to do is create the snapshot at slash mnt, butterfs hyphen data, and I'll call it myvol1 snap. And it looks like we have a snapshot. And as you can see, we have it listed right there. Myvol1 snap, that's our snapshot. So we have a snapshot. That's pretty cool. Now, both of these subvolumes right here can be mounted independently of each other. Of course, the first one is actually mounted already. 
We know that because we can see it right here at the end, slash mnt slash butterfs hyphen data. I just entered the mount command. It shows everything that's mounted on the system. And right there in plain sight at the end, there's our implementation of butterfs that we've created. But the subvolume is not mounted. So of course, that's not going to show up right here. So let's make a directory then. We need to have a place to actually attach that subvolume or that snapshot to. So again, mkdir, just like last time. And I'll do it a little bit differently. I'll mount it under a subdirectory of the mount directory instead of a subdirectory of the actual subvolume itself. Anyway, I'll make that directory and it now exists. So at this point, we have our original subvolume as well as the snapshot. And to show that, underneath the slash mnt directory and then butterfs data, we have myvol1 as well as myvol1 snap. If we take a look at the original subvolume, we have example file.txt. And if we take a look at the snapshot, we also have example file.txt. So both of these actually are mounted independent of each other, but these are subvolumes. So I could reference two completely different versions right here. Now, of course, if I had a bunch of changes that I've created to the original that might not be in the second or vice versa, I can copy files between the two of them to sync them up. There's also additional tools that we can use that go beyond the scope of this video. For example, we have TimeShift. That's a popular utility to use with ButterFS. We also have Snapper as well. That's a SUSE technology, but you can also use that in Fedora in addition. So we definitely have additional tools that we can go over. But right here, I just showed you the very basics of ButterFS, especially when it comes to creating subvolumes and snapshots. And there's definitely additional features that we might go over in an additional video. But for right now, the whole point was to show you guys the basics, and that's exactly what I just did. So there you go. As you can see, ButterFS is a very interesting file system. Now, it may not be the default file system on the majority of distributions, but it's definitely something that I recommend checking out. You can load it in your test environment, and then you can find out if it's going to work for your use case. And if it does, You'll benefit from things like snapshots, scrubbing, and more. So let me know what you guys think of ButterFS in the comments down below. And I'm creating additional content for this channel, and I'm going to go ahead and resume the recording process. I can't wait for you guys to see what I'm working on. So definitely click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. So that way, as soon as the next video is uploaded, you'll be the first to see it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.